okay uh, welcome everybody um, um, new uh, term uh, new units new subjects uh, i know that you guys are uh, pretty busy with uh, your clinical placements with most of you um, who are doing sonography and uh, coming to a zoom tutorial is uh, uh, you know it's a, it's a bit of a challenge uh, but i can see there are 1 2 3 4 5 uh, 6 6 7 8 9 9 people on 10 uh, because two are um, together right so that's that's pretty good um, i think we have a total enrollment of about 76 uh, so um, i would like uh, more people to come into zoom tutorials and uh, you will realize that they are vitally important uh, to you guys when you listen to them anyway uh, these zoom tutorials are not compulsory um, but i would highly recommend them because uh, you can uh, then ask questions or interact uh, with your other uh, classmates and uh, with myself. If you have any problems, any things you want to ask or discuss, we can do that. Now, uh, this unit, MEDS 2106, is uh, called um, uh, Medical Science Research Project 2. Uh, you've done your medical science research project one last term with Anne. Uh, that was um, uh, basically how to formulate a research question and then um, um, form an ethics uh, approval um, form uh, to be filled in. So that um, uh, was about 20% of what you would be doing in this year. So this is very extensive and uh, it's very different as well because almost none of you uh, has ever done research before. Uh, so this is a research unit which will teach you how to do research. Now the most common question uh, people ask is that, um, you know, we are professional sonographers um, and we are uh, becoming uh, uh, sonographers we are in the last term and another three months or four months we'll graduate and then work as sonographers we would never use research why should we burden ourselves uh, with such a heavy uh, unit at the twilight of our um, student life um, Yes, you may not be doing active research in your life, uh, especially for people who go out into, um, you know, small radiology practices or remote areas, you know, even if they can um, deal with the day-to-day -day, uh, scanning and, and uh, uh, work, that is more than enough uh, rather than do research. Um, some of you who would go into uh, large uh, um, tertiary hospitals like uh, Royal Brisbane and Women or, or uh, Prince Charles or <coughs> the Sydney or, or Melbourne or uh, uh, Perth hospitals, uh, you would see that there are people who are doing research projects and, and uh, you may sort of uh, be you know involved in that and as you grow as sonographers uh, to remain in those prestigious hospitals you must do some research and uh, some output uh, but learning about research does not mean that you have to do research it makes you aware that how research is done uh, how these papers are written and how to evaluate uh, the research that you read um, you can uh, you know in your clinical course um, there may be a difficult patient or an unusual patient and you are required to read about that now how do you collect data about that how do you go about doing research about that particular topic uh, not just for your own uh, knowledge but uh, to benefit uh, your colleagues and your institute as well and how you grow as a sonographer because growing as a sonographer just doesn't mean that you just uh, 
uh, have experience in uh, uh, scanning uh, patients. Um, it's a blind lead, blind world out there. If um, you're not being aware and you're not improving your um, uh, abilities, uh, you you don't really grow uh, and you become a robot in the system. So research is very important and uh, in this uh, unit we will um, tackle that. Um, if you have not uh, yet familiarized yourself uh, with the Moodle site, please do that. See what topics are there. Uh, some may be very interesting and some you would say that you never knew about that. Um, and uh, uh, and we, as we go along, uh, we will do that. So first thing is um, today's tutorial is one thing is introduction. And uh, then um, what is on Moodle site and what uh, you need to do. And then we will talk about uh, the assessment uh, items because that that is the gist of that. Um, the whole unit that you must um, uh, pass the assessment items uh, to pass the unit. So I will screen share um, uh, my Moodle site. Um, here it is. Okay. Um, probably you will be able to see it. Now this is MEDS 21006. Second term 2019, uh, which is uh, this uh, spring term. Um, and uh, my Moodle site would be a little bit different from what you see uh, because uh, obviously uh, this is from um, a teacher's point of view. So there are many things which I have on my Moodle site which you, you may not have. Um, and, um, um, and it may look a little bit different. So first of all, uh, be before we begin anything, uh, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands uh, from across Australia. Uh, we are not based in one uh, place, uh, so uh, we are not associated with one nation or one group. Uh, we are uh, covering the whole of Australia and there are some international students as well. Uh, we pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging. Um, for they hold the memories, traditions, culture, and hopes of uh, Aboriginal and Torres Island, uh, Straits Island uh, people across the states. So to begin with this, it is always at the top and uh, we acknowledge that. Then um, you have a little bit of uh, introduction of uh, what this research unit is. Now there are two ways in which you can approach this unit. Um, in the last term in MEDS 21003, the Medical Science Research Project 1, you conceived an idea about a research project, made a title, and uh, uh, did a limited uh, uh, literature search and filled an, an ethics approval form. If you are inclined to take that particular research further, you can do that. Uh, which basically means that you get the ethics approval and you start collecting the data, <clears throat> analyze it, and write a research paper on that. Okay, so that would be um, uh, for students who want to pursue uh, what they did and they want to do it continuously. There's a bit of a catch in that. If you have not got your uh, ethics approval yet, Remember, you filled the form, but you did not submit it uh, to the uh, University Ethics Committee and you did not get the approval of uh, your research. So if you have not done that, you must do it as soon as possible because ethics approval, depending on what type of uh, study you're doing, uh, may take between two to four weeks or six weeks or, or even longer. Uh, so you don't have time for that. Uh, you must get it approved as fast as you can, which means that you need to submit uh, that ethics uh, approval uh, form to the um, ethics uh, committee and uh, get the approval. Even then, um, if you get it in, in two weeks time, fine. But if it 
takes more. For example, you have um, uh, you involve children, or you have animal experiments, or you have um, um, other high risk. Uh, for example, you're doing something interventional, uh, or um, um, it's it's a high risk um, uh, uh, project. Then ethics approval may take some time. So if you get it done within two weeks, fine, you can you can pursue that line. Uh, however, my suggestion would be that if you do that into three weeks, then you only got eight or nine weeks uh, to come up with uh, uh, um, with a paper at the end, which means that you have to collect data, you have to analyze data, you have to write up, and then you have to submit. And that would be like really a huge big task uh, to do uh, if you are uh, going to do um, basic research. The other uh, way of doing this uh, unit is that you consider that topic uh, which you did last term or you just slightly modify that or come up with an entirely new topic and do a narrative literature review on that. You don't need ethics approval for it because you are basically um, collecting um, um, uh, papers and uh, journals and articles um, uh, relevant. So you don't are not actually uh, dealing with patients or, or collecting uh, human data. So you don't need ethics approval. So that saves you two, three, four weeks. Uh, and you don't have any data collection. So you don't, you're not dependent on your practice uh, to get the patients uh, in and, and collect the data from that. Uh, so a narrative review, literature review is um, a, a way uh, to um, uh, sort of uh, expedite the thing and to uh, fit it um, uh, within the time frame that we have. Remember, we don't have too much time. We have only got 12 weeks and 12 weeks, uh, this half the week is gone. So basically you have 11 and a half weeks. And then you have to have your um, um, uh, uh, final paper in um, uh, by 12, 12th week. So which means that you, you, don't, you only have about 10 weeks uh, of study time in this unit. So um, I would suggest uh, that you seriously consider and uh, write a narrative literature review uh, rather than uh, collect uh, data uh, if you have not begun the process yet. If you have, and if you want to do, pursue that, perfectly fine. Now the aim of this uh, unit is basically to write a narrative review uh, paper at the end of uh, 12 weeks. Uh, but it does not mean that uh, your effort or everything is just finishes there because most of you, and I hope most of you, would come up with really good uh, literature and really good uh, papers. And um, um, it would be such a waste if you just uh, leave it to that. Uh, but you can actually get it published uh, every year, four, five, or six uh, of the students. Um, get published and it is a very very good um, thing that you can actually publish research while uh, you are still a student and when once you go out in the field your CV would have uh, a paper to your name so that would be a very good uh, thing um, that that you would um, uh, be doing now uh, the research narrative uh, review paper should be about 2500 words plus minus 10 percent which means between 2250 and 2750 words excluding the title abstract figures uh, tables and bibliography or the, or the reference list um, and and when we sort of like uh, go on and develop uh, this um, uh, unit um, and and go on um, and progress. Uh, we will discuss how to write that and what does it actually means. Now, what is the level of the paper uh, that you write? What we call is final draft level. 
which basically means that your paper is complete in every sense. It has got a, um, a title, uh, affiliations, um, um, keywords, abstract, introduction, um, uh, materials and methods, discussion, um, results, discussion, and conclusion and a bibliography with complete tables and figures and everything so that is what you hand over to your supervisor and say okay this is my paper please give me your comments and the supervisor reads it gives you the feedback which you go back correct the paper and submit for publication Right? So you are at the final draft level, which means that your paper is complete to be given to your supervisor for feedback. And that is exactly what we will be doing, that when you submit your uh, uh, second assessment at the end of uh, uh, 12 weeks, um, then all of us, um, your, your tutors, will sit down, we'll look at the papers, give you feedback, and mark it uh, as well. Okay, so it is not uh, to the level of publishing, but it is one step uh, before uh, getting published. Okay, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is uh, Amir. Um, I'm um, uh, a radiologist, a uh, nuclear medicine physician and a sonographer. Um, I've got plenty of um, um, uh, publications. I have got a PhD as well. Um, and uh, my email is a.aziz at uh, cqedu.au. Uh, so if you want to contact me, that is the best way to contact. And I usually um, um, I reply within uh, one working day. Uh, if there is something very urgent, you can call me on uh, my office number 07 794 this is for emergencies only. I may be busy um, in labs or, or doing other things. So just leave a message uh, and I'll call you back. Uh, <clears throat> the Zoom tutorials are um, every alternate Wednesday, same time, uh, seven o'clock. And uh, um, we'll talk about them in a bit. Now, there are three forums uh, here which you can see in the left upper corner, news forum. News forum would be used by me uh, to give you the news, uh, announcements, important things that you need to know, deadlines or, or something which is of importance to the whole class. Uh, then is the general discussion or the discussion forum. That is for you guys uh, to discuss things among yourselves or uh, direct uh, to to me as well. This is for you know somebody comes up with a nice paper about something or somebody has uh, got uh, um, you know um, want to discuss uh, different um, types of uh, uh, papers or, or whatever uh, you can uh, discuss that. Remember it will be moderated. It's not an unmoderated forum. And you have to uh, stick to the CQU um, appropriate use of uh, internet. So be very careful what you post on there. You cannot slander um, uh, um, either the university or uh, the unit or your colleagues. In, you know, you, you should know how to uh, post on that. And uh, third one is a QA. Um, this is for if you want to ask any questions, uh, usually directed at me, but anybody from the group can um, answer that question. And uh, I would prefer that you, if you have any questions, post them on Q&A so that somebody else might have a similar question or the same question, and then I can reply to it, and then the whole group or the whole class would benefit from that answer rather than personal emails. Obviously, if you have a question uh, of a personal nature, you're most welcome to, um, uh, to uh, send me an email. Um, here is a little bit brief introduction about myself. And uh, now I am not the only person who is uh, going to um, uh, be your tutor. I'm the unit coordinator for the time being. Uh, I'll tell you it in, in a moment what I mean by that. Uh, 
there are four other uh, staff who are um, uh, helping me with this unit. Uh, Anne Quinton, uh, you have, um, uh, you know her from uh, the last term, um, Research Project 1, and uh, Sydney students uh, would know her from the labs. Uh, then there is uh, Dr. Uh, Narelle, um, she uh, is a PhD. Um, then uh, there is um, uh, two other uh, staff members as well, uh, Jesse and uh, um, one more, she's not on board yet, but uh, once she's on board, I will um, uh, tell you about her. So what these tutors would be doing is that I'm going to, I have in fact, uh, divided the class into five groups and assigned one tutor to every group. And each group is about 16 or 17 students. Uh, that particular person would be your main um, point of contact. They would uh, uh, reply to all your queries and questions. They would be marking both your assessment items. Your draft and, and any feedback that you get uh, would be given by them. Uh, obviously with my oversight on that. Uh, but um, you will have your uh, tutors and uh, uh, by the end of this week or early next week, uh, I will uh, email you guys uh, on um, uh, who your tutors are and uh, their contact number and everything and probably they will uh, introduce themselves as well. Now these tutors would come and join us in the tutorials as well, but not all of them. Uh, so maybe in the next tutorial I'll have um, Anne um, uh, sit in. So especially the group uh, Anne, Anne's group, those students uh, should come and um, you know get acquainted with her. Uh, obviously, everybody else should as well. Um, there is uh, a welcome um, uh, to the uh, unit, which is basically what we are talking about right now. And there are PowerPoint slides with that. There are two books uh, that uh, uh, I uh, you know which I have recommended or suggested. Uh, they are not essential, you don't need to buy them, but it, it would obviously be, obviously be better if you have your own copy, but you can borrow them from ebooks, uh, uh, as ebooks uh, from uh, the library site. So go on the this reading list, if you click on that, um, you will be uh, taken to a next page and you have uh, your books here. So if you click on them, um, you can and then go and uh, read them. So one is uh, this uh, book by um, uh, Stephen Hardy, um, uh, and uh, uh, the other one is by Ranjit Kumar, uh, Research Methodology Step-by-Step uh, -step Guide for Beginners and Designing Clinical Research. Uh, these are pretty good books, uh, and um, I would recommend that you buy them and keep them. If you don't buy them, that is perfectly fine. Uh, you can uh, use them, um, uh, you know, for this unit, uh, and they will be helpful. But there's a lot of material on uh, the Bull site which is not uh, in those books. Uh, so they will be an additional reading if you want to do that. Now the Zoom tutorial, uh, you guys have come in through there. Uh, so uh, this portal, uh, click on this and you will get to the Zoom tutorial. I will uh, record all the Zoom tutorials and then uh, put them uh, below here, the recordings. From last year, I have these Zoom tutorials, uh, all of them, uh, seven of them recorded. And if you want, and there is not much change from last year, so you can, um, in your spare time or when you're commuting or, or uh, doing things, uh, you can listen to these uh, Zoom tutorials as well. They can be helpful. But all the new Zoom tutorials, will I will put the recordings uh, below there. Uh, and then we have divided uh, this whole um, unit into weeks. Now, why weeks and not topics? What I have seen is that if you 
divide the things in topics, then uh, students tend to spend a lot more time on uh, some topics and then they run out of time for other topics. So it's very really difficult to keep pace with uh, uh, what, what you're doing, one thing. And the second thing is that uh, the, the topics can be very individual and they don't flow into each other. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can get a little bit confused if you uh, do them out of order. Whereas if we have a week, um, uh, weekly schedule, you know what you need to do in this week. There would be um, um, the, um, uh, you know, uh, the reading uh, materials, lectures uh, to listen to. And um, maybe you can print them, you can uh, put them on your iPads or, or notebooks uh, and take them with you. But you can take, uh, you know, you can pace yourself saying that if, if week two is this much, I need to do that in week two. Okay, so that is why it is in week uh, uh, sort of format. Uh, the top green box would be uh, what what is going to be in that week. For example, uh, today's week one is uh, welcome to the unit and introduction, and introduction to your tutor. Uh, there is a CRO copy of chapter one and two that you should read in this week. Um, and there are some online lectures and reading materials. Zoom tutorial announced, we are doing it right now. And what you need to do, uh, you need to familiarize yourself with assessment tasks in the Moodle and think about a topic the, of your choice. Okay, so, so let's now talk about the assessment items. Okay, you can stop me wherever you want. Um, uh, let it not be a monologue. If you don't understand something or you might need more clarification, you can have the uh, questions at the end, but don't hesitate to stop me anytime and ask a question um, freely. Okay, so there are two uh, assessment items. Uh, one is due on Monday, uh, week six, uh, which is 26th of August. So you have about two months, um, not two months, one and a half months or six weeks uh, to go uh, for that. Remember, there is a vacation week in the middle as well, which is not counted as week, uh, but uh, it is in there. So six weeks means seven weeks from now. And then at the week 12, which is the last week, uh, study week on Friday, so it would be the last day of this term study period. After that, there are two weeks for exams and whatnot. We don't have any exams for this unit, so that's fine. Uh, and that would be 11th of October uh, by 5 p.m. Now remember, these are final dates. They are not going to be changed. You can apply for extension. You know how to apply for that. Uh, basically, uh, on in the left-hand side, uh, you can have the assessment uh, extension request in support and uh, have a valid reason not just a valid reason but supported document if you're sick you should have a medical certificate if you're going abroad you should have a valid reason of going abroad if you have any family uh, emergencies um, send me uh, some sort of support uh, or uh, supporting document or whatnot i can give you an extension i'm uh, pretty um, um, generous with that, uh, but obviously if it is a genuine uh, request. Uh, so please be aware, if you do not have uh, an extension, for every 24 hour late submission, there's a penalty of 5% marks. Okay, that is the university policy. By fourth year, you should be aware of that. Um, so if let's say if, if the deadline is 11th October 5 p.m. and you submit 11th October 5.01 p.m., you lose 5% marks, okay? So one minute over the time is, is, is a penalty. So please, please stick to these uh, dates, put them on your calendar or wherever so that you don't forget about them. Uh, 
So there are two um, uh, assessments. The first assessment, what we call, is as is an annotated bibliography. Okay, if you don't know what annotated bibliography is, Google it. Uh, it will tell you roughly what it means. Uh, basically, it is a discussion on uh, the references or peer-reviewed journal papers that you are going to use in your topic um, and have and discuss them. Uh, that why do you uh, do you want to use them? Uh, what is their quality? Why are they important to your topic? And what does the author basically discuss on those uh, papers? So it's not um, uh, an abstract that you just uh, copy and paste abstract from a paper here. It's basically what you, uh, what you are gaining out of that paper. Okay, and and as we go along um, in week uh, two, three, four, uh, we will talk more and more and more about annotated bibliography, and that is for five references only. Okay, uh, so this will basically give you. Um, an idea uh, that how uh, you uh, look for references and how to read a paper and how to extract the information out of paper. And this assessment item is 2000 uh, plus minus 10 percent words uh, and it weighs 30 percent of the total marks. And you must uh, have, um, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, it should be the same uh, topic as uh, your uh, final draft uh, paper is going to be. So, uh, 2000 words, week six, um, and um, uh, five references. Okay. Now, the second, uh, and we will give you the feedback uh, in two weeks uh, by uh, eighth um, week, we should give you all. Uh, feedback uh, and marks on that assessment. The second assessment is the main assessment. That is 70% of marks, 2,500 words, uh, and uh, it has to be uh, submitted by 11th October, and you will get a feedback and marks uh, by 25th October uh, of that. Now, there is a video link called Unpacking the Assessment Items 1 and 2. And this basically tells you exactly what these assessment items are, what to do in them, how to do them, and everything. Uh, the first assessment, an annotated bibliography submission. So this is the link where you click it and it takes you to the uh, submission page where you submit your um, uh, bibliography or assessment one, um, unpacking, marking rubric, and there is one example uh, from last year of uh, an annotated bibliography that secured very high marks. Okay, so if you don't understand, see that, make, use that as a template, and write your own uh, bibliography according to that particular pattern. The assessment two, which is the research or narrative review paper. Now, if you are uh, writing a narrative review, uh, it will be a different marking rubric. If you are doing basic research, it would be a different marking rubric because obviously both of them are very different. Uh, and they are uh, there, familiarize yourself with that. Um, and, uh, and please be aware of uh, all the dates and everything. Um, and then after that, week two, uh, we begin our um, uh, use there would be um, uh, lectures and tutorials. Uh, they would be reading uh, materials. Okay, so there are six papers or six uh, readings uh, that uh, you can you can download them individually or as a folder. Then uh, week three um, is more topics. Week four um, and we will be talking about annotated bibliography and everything. Uh, week five, uh, more about that. And then you have a vacation week uh, in between. Uh, 
before uh, you submit uh, your narrative review in week six okay on monday so basically this vacation week is there but you will be working on your uh, narrative review uh, assessment uh, during this time uh, which is a good opportunity because there won't be any new uh, 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 sort of uh, topics um, in that week so you can concentrate on uh, your assessment item one right so that is uh, basically your narrative review and when we done that we've got it away then we talk about uh, how to write uh, your uh, um, uh, sorry uh, uh, your uh, uh, review after that uh, prisma um, is 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 a good uh, sort of um, uh, way of uh, uh, writing papers and everything uh, it's uh, items for systematic reviews and meta analysis um, uh, although we are not doing systematic reviews, we are doing narrative reviews, uh, but you, uh, you know, there are concepts which uh, are in that. And probably this has the most of uh, reading material in there. Uh, week 10, um, uh, week 8, sorry, body of the paper. Uh, week 9, how to write discussion. Uh, week 10, how to write your abstract and conclusion. And week 11 would be bring it all together. and then week 12 is your final touches and uh, by friday uh, you uh, 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 submit it now one uh, more thing um, is feedback i would encourage you that as you write and develop your work send it back to your uh, tutor for feedback and guidance okay rather than just forget about it do it and submit it obviously um, you know there would be a lot more mistakes but if you send your draft before you submit obviously your tutor would be able to give you some guidance how to improve that so that you can improve your manuscript and uh, submit uh, on the due date easier said than done which basically means that you should allow at least one week uh, for you to send a draft for your tutor to read it give you the feedback send you back and then you read that feedback and uh, edit your manuscript and submit okay so for your um, uh, annotated bibliography which is due in uh, week six you should send it in a fairly final form uh, not later than beginning of week five or in fact end of week four so that you can be given timely uh, and uh, detailed feedback and for the paper which you have to submit end of week 12 please submit your drafts not after the end of week 11 so that we can read it and give you the feedback remember you're not the only student we have each tutor has 16 or 17 students and if it takes one hour to uh, read something and give them a feedback it takes 16 17 hours uh, which is three full days of work so that is why if you send it like two days before uh, the due date in panic that oh you know i don't know what to do and I'm, I'm not sure if i'm on the right track then obviously you know you don't get feedback or even if uh, your tutor is kind enough to give you feedback it would be too late for you to do anything about it okay so basically uh, keep and it's not that you can only send one draft and one feedback you can keep on sending them pieces of your paper or the whole paper or or whatever you have uh, come up with or written uh, back to your tutor uh, so that they can keep you on track and keep helping you so that you have a positive uh, outcome uh, from uh, the unit okay we are here to help you we will help you i know it is a very daunting uh, thing and um, 
it's very frustrating sometimes because what you think is is good may not be uh, good from an academic point of view it's very different from uh, case reports or or um, um, the um, assessments you have done in other units uh, before uh, this is uh, something which is um, related to um, um, a very formal uh, research topic. Okay. Uh, so we've discussed the housekeeping, we've discussed the uh, assessment items. One last thing um, to uh, talk about is your research topic. Now, I want everybody of you, um, every one of you, to come up with the idea of what you are going to uh, write about. It doesn't need to be in a very formal title. If you can do that, fantastic. But at least some idea of what you are um, going to write about. Okay. And by the end of week two, so next, by the end of next Friday, which is, um, by the end of next Friday is 26th. So before 26th, you must send it to me um, and I will send it to all your tutors as well. Um, it should be maybe a paragraph, maybe a few lines uh, that you want to look at, let's say the effect of um, mother's BMI on detecting uh, fetal anomalies at 18 to 22 week um, just, uh, morphology scan. Okay, so I know exactly uh, what you are trying to do. We need that because sometimes you uh, come up with uh, topics which don't really have much uh, to talk about or they are very ambiguous or like some people have a habit, they accumulate a lot of stuff into one topic. So they would say, oh, I want to talk about endometriosis. Okay, there are these thick books written on endometriosis. What do you want to talk about? Oh, I want to talk about endometriosis in teenage girls. Okay, there are these thick books about that. What exactly do you want? So you, you need to be a little bit clear in your minds uh, what you want to do and very specify that uh, to, to uh, um, a narrow uh, sort of thing. And that is exactly what we are going to do in our CATS, the critical appraisal tools. What are research questions, hypotheses, objectives, how they are derived, what are the things that you need to know about them? And, uh, um, uh, you know, how to come up with a research question. Now, the good thing is that you have done this in uh, MEDS 21003. So you, you can use the same topic and uh, let us know. Or you can modify that, that, mm, okay, because M might, must have given you a lot of feedback on, on uh, what you wrote in your ethics approval form. Uh, so <clears throat> you would have an idea what works and what doesn't work. So you can do that. So it's not something you would say, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? In two weeks, I cannot think of anything. You have already done that. Uh, you can use the same research topic or modify that. Or if uh, you are like, nah, that was a bit too, you know, at that time I thought about it, but now I think that was not something I would like to do. I want to do something new. By all means, uh, you are most welcome uh, to do something new. For people who want to do uh, basic research, uh, they would up till now have a very clear cut idea on uh, what their research question is and what their uh, research title should be, okay? So by the end of next week, uh, please uh, send that uh, to me so that I can uh, have a, um, 
um, an idea of uh, what um, uh, you know is there and I can give you some feedback or give you some suggestions on what uh, you need to do uh, with that okay so yeah so that is basically all this tutorial is about uh, our next tutorial would be in two weeks time on 31st of july uh, wednesday same time seven o'clock eastern at the moment all of the east has got the same time uh, but uh, you know come september october uh, you know the daylight saving time when it kicks in it would be a little bit more complicated but at the moment you know, we are seven o'clock. Um, uh, South Australia and Northern Territories are six thirty. Uh, Western Australia is five. Easy. Um, if you have any questions at the moment, uh, feel free to ask at all. Okay, I have a question. Sorry, it's Monica. Yeah. Um, any sort of advice if we want to do a new topic, um, sort of where to start if we don't know what topic we want to do? Is there sort of any advice you can offer for that? Um, keep it uh, rather broad rather than very, very narrow because the narrower you get, the less and less uh, literature you get. Um, um, and um, um, Pick something which uh, is, interests you. Maybe you have done it in your previous years, like third year or second year, or something interesting uh, you saw, or or uh, something like that. So basically, it's more up to you what you really want to um, have. Um, I, you know, the, my, the generally. It should be a broad enough um, uh, topic, but not a general topic. Like I said, not endometriosis, and you can write a book on that. But maybe that, okay, endometriosis as a cause for infertility, uh, as a cause for secondary infertility. Okay, so that means that um, uh, the woman has some kids. Now she cannot conceive because of endometriosis. What does the literature say about it? So it, it would be broad enough, but not a whole general kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, already, are we allowed to do it again? Um, if you, because, you know, broad questions can be already done a couple of times, you know? Yeah, yeah. Are we allowed yeah. to do that again? Yeah, that's that's correct. If you have, uh, if you come across uh, a literature review uh, or a, um, a narrative review which has been done exactly on what you are thinking, obviously you need to modify that a little bit. Um, um, uh, so um, you you can because you know the medical world is so vast that uh, you can think of anything and. Uh, even if it is done uh, by a group before, let's say five years back, there would be a lot more literature that has come up in the last five years which can uh, modify that. And you can argue, in fact, that there was a narrative review done five years back and these are the findings, but the new studies and the new research adds to it or puts it in doubt or uh, you know, modifies that. So, yeah, so I mean, there's no limitation to that. Uh, you can use that to your advantage as well. Thanks for that. Yeah. So, you had the first question Will you be the tutor as well? I am, uh, but I am leaving a university and uh, I will be gone by the end of fourth week. So, I'm here with you for three and a half weeks more. Somebody will take over as unit coordinator. Uh, probably. Oh, oh, Veronica. Anyway, um, uh, and Monica, both of you. Both of you are together on the laptop. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I will be, um, I will not be with you guys after week four. Uh, I, um, um, I um, am um, 
going back into clinical world enough teaching i've been here four years uh now time to change maybe i'll come back after a few years i don't know but at the moment uh, i'm going so i am here to overlap with the new unit coordinator at the moment we do not have a name uh, possibly by the next week or definitely before i go there would be a new person and i will sort of hand over the whole thing uh, the thing is that this unit is already completely developed all the lectures are there the topics are there the reading uh, material is there so you won't feel that if i'm there or if somebody else is there uh, it wouldn't matter obviously everybody uh, you know has their have their own concepts and have their own ways of doing things uh, but um, the the core the basis would not change uh, so don't worry that um, uh, you know there would be anything um, um, uh, that uh, would be changed so yeah so people from makai uh, know me um, who were here in the labs and everything um, it does not um, uh, you know it, it's good to see the familiar faces but uh, uh, you know i don't discriminate between people who have been associated with me or people who are not so um, that would be good now nancy asks can we write a narrative review on a topic which someone has already written a systematic review on yes nancy like i um, uh, just said um, you can um, obviously you would not copy it and then copy and paste it word to word your narrative review would be entirely different from somebody else's and narrative reviews and systematic reviews are very different okay um, um, systematic reviews are a lot more um, uh, scientific a lot more um, uh, you know there are ways to do it uh, narrative reviews are more uh, of um, uh, narration that, that's why they are called narrative uh, so they they don't have the data and then they don't um, uh, they, they are not quantitative as such um, so you can if the systematic review is an old one obviously there would be a lot more newer papers on the same topic after that or you can uh, basically uh, take that and criticize that that uh, systematic review was done by this 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 person uh, this was their findings however new research says either supports it or doesn't support it um, or uh, they had this bias or that bias or, or uh, uh, you know you can um, have a commentary on 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 that from a narrative uh, review point um, so yeah so it, there's no limitation at all that your um, topic has to be uh, brand new uh, remember the research at grad cert level or post grad level is how to do research okay we are not you are not increasing the body of knowledge you are learning how to do research which basically means that sometimes you just um, um, repeat somebody else's uh, work with your own data my master's thesis was on hepatobiliary uh, imaging um, and i uh, modeled it after one of the papers uh, in uh, simbathlomius hospital in fact that doctor was still there when i was doing that and um, i took his uh, topic his uh, question and everything had my own data and then compared it to that data and, and got something uh, from that. So you can basically repeat the same work at, at, at the grad dip and master's level. PhD is where you are supposed to uh, generate new um, ideas and add to the body of knowledge and uh, come up with something, um, uh, you know, something new and something amazing. I'm not saying that you're not amazing, but uh, you can't get away without being too amazing. Okay. Anything else we want to talk about at all? 
well if not um, you all of you have a very good night and thank you for coming in and i hope i will see you in uh, two weeks time i'll still be here in two weeks um, probably uh, i will be taking yeah so next one then 14th august tutorial probably i will not be here so um, um, hope to see you guys again uh, in two weeks and uh, you take care and have a good night thank you bye